Cherie here from Cherie's Alchemy. And I'm back today, finally, with my very first Sew Along, Sew With Me video. Um, as I promised, I recorded myself sewing my latest Willow cardigan. Remember, um, I shared one of my, I think it was my last video, I shared um, my review of the Willow cardigan, which is a free PDF pattern. Uh, from moodfabrics.com. Um, and so I made another one to add into my black and white collection and I went on and recorded myself sewing it. Um, be forewarned, I said some things that are incorrect. For example, I start off the video saying there are four pattern pieces. There are more than four pattern pieces. Line drawing here. You have your jacket back or cardigan back which is cut in the fold. You have your cardigan front piece, which you cut two of. You have your upper sleeve, which you cut two of. You have your lower sleeve, which you cut two of on the fold. Or because of the way I like to use my pattern, I actually cut four of these in a nice so a seam here. You'll see in the video. And then you have this shawl collar piece here. And then you actually have pockets. I've never used the pockets. I don't like putting pockets on very stretchy knit fabrics. I find that then I'm sticking my phone in there and it's sagging down and it's looking all weird. Um, so I leave that off. I've thought about putting inseam pockets on my next one. I might go ahead and give that a try. Um, but I don't tend to use patch pockets on knits. I, I just don't. Plus they seem like they would be very low all the way down there on the hem. Not sure what that was about. But anyway, I didn't use the pockets. If you like pockets, use the pockets. Um, what else? Um, oh, I wanted to remind you guys, there is a sort of like blog style tutorial with some images, some words on the Mood Fabric website. You can consult that as well. This is just me sewing along, talking through the process. The lighting is not great. The angles are not great. And I say this, you know, I talk to you guys about my perfectionist tendencies. And I've I've filmed this video actually almost two weeks ago. And I keep looking at it and I'm like, just put the video up, Sheree. There'll be people who will watch it just for the sake of watching it. If you guys have questions, if it's unclear, leave kind and gentle comments in the comment section below. Your girl's a little sensitive, okay? Uh, <laughs> so be kind. Um, but yes, and, and understand. Um, I never mentioned this, I think, but I actually was a part of a sewing TV series called It's So Easy. I think I filmed like four or five episodes for that TV show. Um, it used to be on PBS. It kind of went on to like some creative TV or something like that. And I think it's back. I've seen some people saying that they filmed for it. But I was a part of the um, season one, actually. Um, and then I, I can't remember. I think I skipped season two because we had moved. And then I was a part of season three and four. I think something like that. I can't remember. I have to look back at the video. Um, but... I recorded four or five uh, episodes. In fact, I recorded one with my daughter, which, oh my God, I look back at that. She was so tiny. Um, but anyway, I do understand like the lighting, the angles, all the things involved. Um, you know, I can remember they would tell me, you know, don't stop or if you stop exactly how to hold your hands and where to look so they could easily like have me restart and in, you know, be able to bleed in and, and merge in um, me restarting. And so I always have that in my head when I'm making these videos, but I also understand <laughs> they were professionals and I was just listening to them. I directing myself in, in even having the time to like look at it and then go back and see if I have to change. It just doesn't exist in my life. And also like it's sewn now, um, so I'm not gonna pick the seams apart or or redirect or recut, right? So again, be gentle, but also understand I do have an understanding of what I need to do to improve. 
And hopefully as I do these more and more, I will continue to improve. Um, but again, if you have any questions, if things are just really unclear, just gently point that out in the comments and either I or I'm sure someone else watching this video um, can chime in um, and redirect there. But hopefully visually you could see, but even there I was like, oh, I need to pick a different fabric when I do a sew along because you kind of want to see a fabric where it has a very clear right side and wrong side, right? Anyway, the brain is always processing all that, but um, we'll just keep working through it. This is just something fun to share. Hopefully it encourages you to try this Willow Cardigan pattern. Again, it's free. Um, I think, oh, let me tell you. Um, so I think I have, I have either three or four yards of this knit. So ITY knit. I think it's from Joanne Fabrics. If it's not, I got it at Fabric Mart. But I think I got this when I was on my like animal print hoorah um, with Joanne's. Um, in fact, I think I have this in pink also and I made a wrap dress with it. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is from Joanne's. I think this is from Joanne Fabrics. So anyway, I, um, I had enough fabric to make this little cardigan that I'm wearing and I have pictures at the end um, that I put in a little video, but let me just stand up real quick. And sorry, I'm in my dining room and my chandelier is like casting these like rays of light everywhere. But anyway, I made a little cardigan. This is a new to me pattern company called Stylark. And gosh, I forget the name of the cardigan. I'll put it in the description box. I'm in love with this pattern and now I'm all about going to that website and looking at some other patterns to try. But I'm supposed to be on a no buy. Like, Oh, I forgot to tell you guys that. I'm trying to put myself on a no buy for fabric and patterns for like at least two months because I've, I've done so many hauls and it's like I'm itching to sew through so many things. But every time I get something new, then it's like, oh my gosh, I got to sew that. So I really am going to try to force myself to exercise a little bit of discipline. It's gardening season right now. So honestly, I don't need to be wasting any time shopping and doing all kinds of stuff because I need to be in the garden, doing my work life, or sewing, right? So anyway, um, I do want, I am gonna check out Style Art, so. Okay, I'm badly. Anyway, Style Art Cami, I'll tell you about that um, later in another video, because there's a review coming for this, because I, I am in love. And then after I made the Cami, I had like 20 inches left, and I'm like, I don't wanna just put this back on the shelf. I'm really trying to sew up like, all the fabric when I can, so I don't have these little bobbly bits. So look what I made. I made myself a little circle scarf. And I just, I live for a scarf. Like I'll throw this on in a t-shirt on an early spring morning when I go in the garden, cause it's, you know, still a little fresh, 60 degrees. Put this on as it warms up, pop it off. So look at that. And look, I'm looking all warm and cozy right now. So yeah, this is my little set. Watch the video for the so long. If you have no interest in seeing the so long and you just want to see how this looks, you can fast forward to the end. I have some pictures on my man again. I have some pictures on me and I have a cute little twirl video, my first little twirl video. So I hope you enjoy it. I thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Um, tell your friends about my channel if it's your pleasure. Um, if you're interested in seeing my gardening journey, a couple of you asked in the comments, and I should I should have told you guys, my gardening channel is called At Home with Sheree. I might be changing the name. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's At Home with Sheree. Um, and you can watch me grow my vegetables from seed um, and my little journey planting those up and growing and harvesting and canning. Um, and this is so ridiculous, but I actually, you guys I have this whole plan for all these floral and like fruit print fruit and vegetable print dresses and tops that I'm going to be making solely for taking pictures in my garden with my harvest <laughs> it is so ridiculous but that's my business. <laughs> so, so I'll be showing, that'll be something that I'll be sharing soon. Actually, I already made one of those dresses and shared it on Instagram last week for Blue Week for So Happy Color. But um, yeah, I was just like, oh my God, when I do my harvest 
pictures for my Instagram page, I want to be wearing like pretty floral dresses. <laughs> and so I pulled a stack of floral quilters cottons. Um, and I'm just making all these just little sundresses and cute little ruffle things so that my pictures are cute with my vegetables. But anyway, that's enough blabber for today. Um, again, I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys back here soon, probably with a pattern review. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Okay, so let's look at the pattern pieces. As I said before, you have four pattern pieces for this willow cardigan. You have the back, which is cut on the fold. You have the front of the cardigan, which you have to cut two pieces. This here is the long um, collar that is attached. Um, basically, it's the neckline facing. It's attached to the front around the perimeter of the opening. You have your sleeve, which you cut two of. This is the top half of the sleeve. So this is your shoulder seam here that's curved. And then here is that wider um, area that's just um, below the elbow. And you can see it's cut pretty wide and this is where it's gathered together along here. So you have to put the gathering stitches there. And then you're attaching this lower part of the sleeve, which is much more fitted. And so you have to cut four of this section because it's lined, and then you cut two for your sleeve. Okay, so um, pretty straightforward and not a lot of pieces. And so I'm going to just set up the camera now and let you guys watch me sew it. I'm going to start by pinning the shoulder seams, the back shoulder seam to the front shoulder seams. I'm going to pin and stitch. Okay, next I'm going to pin the side seams together and stitch those. I'm going to repeat that on the other side and then I'm going to finish these seams on my serger. Okay next up I have already pinned my four different sections of the lower sleeve and I'm just sewing those.
Now I'm sewing the side seams for the upper sleeve. Okay, and then this is the back neck seam for the front sweater facing, neckline facing. Okay, so now I'm gonna head to the iron. I'm gonna press this seam open right here. I'm gonna press that down. And then this is actually gonna get folded in half after this is pressed down. So this will be pressed open. And then it's going to get folded in half like this along the raw edges connecting. And then I'm gonna press this all the way down and so the facing is like this and then this is the edge that i'll stitch to the front um and back neckline all around the cardigan okay so let me go finish my seams do some ironing and i'll be back to finish the assembly okay so let me show you where i am now i've searched the seams on the sleeve the upper sleeve i also did a press here to mark my center seam so that when I attach this to my the body of the jacket um, at that shoulder seam I have an indication for where the center of the sleeve is so that's that the next thing I want to show you is that as I explained I went and pressed open that center seam on the um, uh, on the jacket front uh, neckline facing and I've pressed this together um, along the middle straight down the middle and then this is the edge that I'm going to attach to the cardigan so I have that prepped the shoulder seams and the side seams on the cardigan are all surged and ready to go. Now, if you don't have a serger, you can do a zigzag machine. Uh, you can do a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. Knits typically will not ravel. I mean, if it's a, like a wool knit or some kind of a, like a linen knit, they, they will ravel some. But this is a, a rayon knit. And so if I had to leave these edges raw... Um, it would be fine. But if you have a serger, go ahead and serge the edges uh, that are exposed. Otherwise, you can do a zigzag uh, stitch on your machine. But I've taken the lower part of the sleeve, those four segments, I've pressed those seams open. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take two of them and turn them right sides out. And then I'm going to stick it inside of one so that the right sides are facing. I'm going to match up the seam. Whoopee, I'm all twisted up on myself. There it is. Sometimes with the print you're working with, you can get lost. So see, I'm matching up those seams. I'm going to pin that together. Pinning that together 
all the way around that lower edge. This is the only kind of like tedious um, seam to sew because the wrist is, you know, is small. But get your pens in. Use as many pens as you need to. If you're a beginner sewer you can, and you know, you're dealing with slippery fabrics, you can do a hand baste around that to make sure that they are attached. And then I'm going to sew all around that outer edge um, and then they'll get flipped inside out. Just doing the same thing to the second one. Find that center seam on the lower edge. Getting those pinned together. And adding more pens. Enough pens to keep it in place for me. Okay, got that pinned together. I'm going to go to the sewing machine and sew those together, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have stitched along the wrist, and um, I'm just trimming my threads. Off before I turn this uh, right side out. I should have trimmed these longer ones off before, but I did not. And you don't need to finish this seam because it's going to sit on the inside of the garment. So let me show you. You know, you've sewn that together along that edge, and now you turn it out and then stuff it so that it's wrong side facing now. You see that's your, that's the wrist uh, opening. You're gonna connect the upper edge together, pin that, but see this is that lower sleeve part for your cardigan. So you see how snugly that fits and this is where we're going to attach the upper portion of the sleeve. So I'm going to, that's why you press that open before because it's hard to press that. See how nice and flat it is. You press it before you sew it. And this is one of those steps. I mean, you skip it and your, your garments just never look as neat. So I like to really use my iron and when necessary, press those seams open so that they're nice and flat and your garment, it's crazy, but your garment really does look better. So I'm connecting this upper raw edge of the lower sleeve section, pinning it, and then I'm going to base this together so that when I bend, uh, pin it to the upper portion of the sleeve, I know that I have these two um, laying flat, no puckering, etc. So I'm just gonna do a base stitch all around here on both of those. Um, so I'll get that ready. And then the other thing I'm going to do when I'm at the machine, uh, two more things. I'm gonna go ahead and prep. I like to prep my things in segments and then sit and do my stitching. Um, so 
And then for the lower edge, you're gonna gather all the way around. I like to start and stop at the midpoint. So remember I told you I pressed that. So I start, I'm gonna start here with my gather stitch all the way around and I'll stop here so that I can gather those. So I'm gonna do that and I'll show you what that looks like at the end. The final thing I'm gonna prep and sew is the collar band. So I can still see here from my press fold, this is the center. I'm going to take the center point here, right? Those are folded together. And this is something that you can base with this. I don't bother because I've pressed it so nicely and I know it's going to stay flat. So center to that center line, pin. And then I'm just gonna go through, pin all the way around. So this is still the back neckline of the cardigan. And you don't wanna stretch because you don't want your seam to be puckered. You just wanna go, connect. This is my serge seam, I'll cut that off. I have my seam pressed to the back. So I'm gonna pin there, this is right at the shoulder line now. That's the shoulder seam. And then I'm just gonna pin all the way down the front. All the way down the front to the lower edge. And you're just following, matching the outer edge on the facing to the outer edge along the front opening of the cardigan. Just take your time. Again, use as many pins as makes you feel comfortable. And yeah, I'll continue this. I'm going to sew. Um, and after I get these next steps stitched, I'll come show you what they look like. Oh, let me show you here. The cardigan does have like a little bit of a pivot here. So I pin there. All right. And then I just continue here. So because it's a stretch, it'll just naturally curve there. And you'll be fine. Okay, just keep pinning. Okay, I'll be back after I get that finished up. Okay, friends, so I've gotten my upper sleeves together here. And what I do to do my gathering stitch is I simply max out my uh, stitch width and stitch length. So it puts in a very loose stitch that I can then very easily take one end and I'm just sliding the fabric together of that upper sleeve portion. I have my loose thread stitching here and I'm going to separate them. I'm just gonna take one tail end. So you wanna make sure you leave good tail ends when you do this. Taking one tail end and I'm just gently pulling while I slide. And again, I like to work from center to seam with these sorts of things because it automatically makes sure that I'm, you know, gathering proportionally. If it's a really uh, wide ruffle, say like on a really full skirt, I might even do that in quarters as a way to make sure that my gather is distributed evenly. So I'm just gonna do that some, and I'll pull it more or spread it out more as I start to attach the pieces. I like to construct the sleeve first so that I don't have the whole weight, you know, the rest of the garment pulling. 
So I'm gonna take this one sleeve. And I should have mentioned with the sleeve, there is no back and front to any of those pieces. Um, this move pattern for the sleeve, they're completely symmetric in the front and the back. And so you don't have to be concerned about, about that. So I'm going to attach the lower portion of the sleeve now to, I mean the upper portion of the lower sleeve to the bottom of the upper sleeve. Okay, so I'm taking this here, this is the center of my seam, sticking it in. This is the center edge here, right? So this is going to line up with that inner arm seam. Match your seams up. Stick your pin in. Let me cut this strangling serger thread. And so now, remember my centers are ironed. So here's my center of the lower portion. I'm gonna hold that in my hand. You can put a clip here, you can put a pen here, you can use a marking pen, whatever you feel comfortable with. And then here's the center of my uh, upper sleeve bottom edge portion. I'm just lining those up and I'm sticking a pen. And now I'm going to adjust. So you can see here, I need to pull this tighter to line up there. And I'm just gonna work on one side, pulling, spreading out the gathering and pinning. And then I'll work the other portion. Make sure you're pulling the right thread. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull. Take that tighter. Sometimes when you're really close to the edge, that will roll down. So you wanna make sure you fix that. And then I'm gonna go ahead now and just start distributing my gathers and then penning. Again, you use as many pens as you need to feel comfortable stitching. Make sure nothing is rolled under. Your seam is flat with right sides touching each other. Okay. can see here in this portion, this is a little bit tighter than here. So all you have to do is just start to kind of slide with your finger until you're satisfied with how the gathers are distributed. Be careful not to poke yourself. Sometimes you do have to take the pin out. If you've pinned it in a slant, it won't, you know, slide across easily. So I feel better about that. And I'm gonna go do the other side and I'll do the same thing on the other sleeve. Right down. Okay, so it's all pinned. I'm gonna do the same thing to my other sleeve and I'll show you what it looks like 
Actually, I'm gonna pin the other one. I'm gonna sew them both. I'm gonna serge this edge, and then I'll be back to show you what it looks like. I stitched that seam as I said I would. Um, clipped off any loose edges of thread, loose strings of thread, serge the edge all the way around. And then you can see, this is the upper sleeve portion that I'm going to attach to the cardigan front and back. This is that lower sleeve. I'm pulling it down. So this is it on the inside. I'm gonna give this a good press. And then usually what I'll do is I'll go back in here and kind of tack this area down because it is a little bit bulky. Um, so I'll just tack it to one layer of that lower sleeve portion. And now if I turn this right side out, all right, you see, there's the sleeve. So that's that sleeve shape, all right? So that's that sleeve shape. The lower edge is finished here. This is the part that goes to your wrist. This is the upper portion that we're gonna attach into the arm size of the cardigan body. And then I've done exactly the same thing here. So again, there's no right, there's no front and back to the sleeve. So I decide based on which direction I've pressed my seam in, which is going to go on the left and which is going to go on the right. So I have my two sleeves together, okay? I also did what I told you I would do earlier, which is attaching the facing to the body of the jacket. So I've stitched all around the edge. I surged it, I've surged the hem already, so that'll be ready to get folded up and hemmed. I'm going to go and press this down really good and then I like to do a top stitch right all the way around the perimeter there. So I'm gonna do that, I'm going to hem it, and then that final step will be attaching the sleeve. So I'll be right back, let me iron, let me top stitch, and I'll be back to show you how to attach your sleeve, and then that's actually going to be the final step. So I'll be right back. Okay, before I actually do the hemming, I decided to come back to show you um, how I prep this for hemming, um, especially with um, these knit fabrics when you're using a serger, well, in general. So I press this um, seam flat going into the body of the um, cardigan. So you see here, it's nice and flat. This is going to be my top stitching line. So I press that in, and then I also press in my seam at the same time, so I can sew that continuously. So I've got that hemmed up, pressed all the way around. And then I just wanted to show you this part here on the corner, what I do, I like to fold just that little tip in a little bit. Can you see there how that's folded in? At an angle here. So I'll stitch catching that little corner underneath. And that's so that I don't have like a little corner sticking out when I flip that over to the front. I hope you can see that. Okay, I'm gonna stitch and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. And I've gotten my top stitching done. I'll press this really good at the end. But you can see here, I got my top stitching done cardigan is hemmed and we clip that string you can see and now my final step is to attach the sleeve and then serge that seam okay so now I'm ready to attach the sleeve to the shell of the cardigan remember I did the ironing here to mark the center of the sleeve so I'm gonna just stick a pin there. And then I'm going to find the corresponding shoulder seam. So that's here. And I'm going to insert the sleeve. So see, here's the armhole. 
Here's the sleeve. I'm going to insert the sleeve into the armhole like so. I'm gonna go to that center that is marked with the pen and I'm going to join that to the shoulder seam there. I'm gonna take the pen out and then pin it this way. And I like to pin and sew from the sleeve side because as we gather this um, and insert this, I wanna make sure this is really flat. So this seam is pressed backwards to the back already. This is pressed towards the back of the bo um, body of the cardigan. Stick a pin there. And then I over pulled this. Sorry, let me, let me get some of that out. So I'm going to pin up to this mark. And here, I'm just gonna pin around. And then if there's any gaping, I'm just going to pull that string really gently to um, make sure that it fits. And so actually that's pretty flat. I think I was mistaking. I think you don't gather this part. So forget that. Let's pull that out, pin it. Okay, so that's why there was no marking on that sleeve because there is no gathering on that sleeve. So that was my confusion. <laughs> but anyway, I have my sleeve set in. I'm gonna do the other sleeve. I'm gonna stitch all around that seam and then I'm gonna search that seam and then we're, we're done. So I'll be back. Okay, so I have attached my sleeve. I pinned it, I sewed it, I surged it. Cut that extra string. You can see here what it looks like on the outside. So the cardigan is done. I'm gonna go in um, with my small scissors and just find all the little excess strings that need to be cut away, give it a good press. And then I'm gonna show you what this beauty looks like. Okay, I'll be back.